So in my previous video, we saw a comprehensive overview of Retrieval Augmented Generation or RAG. We saw why we need RAG and in what situations the LLMs can overcome their limitation with the help of RAG. Now, as a refresher, let's have a quick look at the RAG pipeline. So with RAG, we first create a vector database of documents related to the domain. Whenever a user asks a question or prompt, we not only pass the prompt to the LLM, but we also send the query to the vector database to retrieve related information. And the retrieved information augments the prompt and the prompt provides more context to the LLM. And the LLM now is context aware and can answer the query much better compared to this red line, which indicates the system without RAG where the user directly sends the question to the LLM and the LLM response without any awareness of the context. Now, as we just saw, whenever a user asks a question or a prompt, it hits a vector database. But how is this vector DB built? The steps involved in the processing of the data and building of the vector DB is called ingestion. And the steps involved are chunking, embedding, and indexing. So in this video, let's do a deep dive into chunking, which is the first step in ingestion. And in the following videos, let's have a look at embedding, indexing, and other parts of the rack. So what is chunking? Now the text chunking is a technique in natural language processing to divide the input text into smaller segments. It can be based on the parts of speech or it can be based on the structure of the text such as if you're dealing with say Python code or Markdown code or it could be multimodal when you have a PDF document which has some images and also some text or it could be tabular data where you have a lot of tables or it can even be based on the semantics in the text where you want to group sentences or words that have a similar meaning together. Why do we even need chunking? The nature of natural language processing or LLM models is that these models deal with numbers and to convert the text input into numbers, we do an important operation called embedding, which we will deep dive into in the coming weeks. Embedding is a crucial but essential operation for any LLM task. In our big data world, where the data is ever growing, we end up with a few problems. For example, the scale of the data is so big that you know embedding a huge document of say 100 plus pages will only capture the gist of the story and this gist turns out to be the contextual information so it's important that we dig out the valuable information hidden in just a few lines of the document instead of just converting the entire document into context and the next limitation is that of the model itself AI models only take in finite size input as their context window, as they all have a specified context window. Providing an, an entire book or even a large size data as input is impractical. So we need to break that down into inputs, which are of smaller size chunks. The next problem is that of the data management itself. Chunking can enable easy management of the data. For example, Instead of a huge 30 GB file that's stored in a single storage, it'll be much easier if we divide it into say 100, 300 MB files and keep them distributed. And the next problem is that of the retrieval efficiency and accuracy. So this is equivalent to how engineers approach any problem. When we break down the problem into smaller ones, it's much easier to solve all the smaller size problems rather than tackle it all in one go. Similarly, when data is broken down into smaller chunks, it's much easier to deal with a retrieval and also to improve the accuracy of the language model. So let's look into different chunking methods. Let's start with fixed size chunking, which is a very naive implementation. Now, before we get started, like I would like to say that chunking and splitting are interchangeable terms. So let's start with fixed size chunking. In a naive implementation, like we are given a text and we choose the chunks and we choose a chunk size. All that we do is we iterate over the text and whenever we hit the chunk size, we just append to the list of chunks. It's fairly straightforward. And as we can see the for the input text of better three hours too soon than a minute too late, it's been split into three chunks. So it doesn't care about splitting any words or it doesn't care about any period or anything like that in the text. So 
we can see that it's abruptly split two into T and OO. So it's not the best of methods, but still, if you want to look at the Langchain implementation, we also have it in Langchain. All that we have to do is use the character text splitter and we have to provide the chunk size and we can also provide the chunk overlap optionally. And we also have the separator. We'll look into separators when you look at the other methods. There's also option to strip the white space. If we actually don't want any white spaces trialing in the end. So all that we do is we read a text file. So I've gone for the state of the union text file, which is, you know, which is a speech given by the president of the United States annually. and all it does is like read the text and we provide the text to the text splitter by invoking the create documents function. Then it splits the text into different chunks. It sticks to the chunk size that we have strictly given. So as we can see, all the chunks are of the same size and it does have its own drawbacks. You can see that this chunk starts with a period and this chunk starts with the S period and then there's a new paragraph starting within a chunk so it's not the greatest of methods but it's a very naive method and we can also do the same chunking using llama index for that we'll have to use the sentence splitter and we also have to use the flat reader the flat reader is provided by llama index as one of the uh, readers so it's used to load data. Flat Reader is used to extract raw text from a file and save the file type in the metadata. So that's what we exactly want to do. We want to extract raw text from the file because it's just a text file. We can use the Flat Reader. We read the document, which is State of the Union text file, and we have the documents. But when it comes to Llama Index, it deals with notes rather than documents. So everything is a node rather than a document in Llama index. Once we use a splitter and we say get nodes from documents and it gives us the different nodes and we can see that each node has a node ID and it's done the splitting for us. Now that we saw a naive text splitter, which had its own drawbacks. For example, it started with, you know, a S period and then some of the splits didn't make sense at all. Let's look at something slightly more sensible, which is recursive chunking or recursive. In Langchain, it's implemented in this class, which is recursive character text splitter. So if we look at the definition, it says this text splitter is the recommended one for generic text and it uses a list of separators for example the uh, new paragraph or the new line or the spaces but we do have the option to provide the list of separators when we create an object with this class so it does two things first it uh, tries to split by the list of characters and then it measures the chunk size by the number of characters if the chunk size is big then the text is split using the second separator that we provide in the list. So it starts splitting the given text using the first separator that's in the list. And it looks at the chunk size, which is measured by the number of characters. And if the chunk size is bigger than the chunk size that we have specified, then it moves on to the second one. And it tries to separate the text into separate chunks using the second separator and recursively it goes on and on till it has used up all the separators and created chunks of size that are smaller than the chunk size that we have specified. So that is how the recursive splitter works. Let's try to run the recursive character text splitter using the separators that are the default separators and then let's provide a chunk size of 100 and chunk overlap of 20 and see how it goes. So we're just printing two of the splits that it's created and we can see that it's just split the first one like this and the second one this way. So let's try to separate the same text which is state of the union dot text and let's use just two of the separators uh, which is the uh, new paragraph and the new line and then see how it goes. So if we run that and print the first two splits, we can see that the split is much more sensible. It ends with a complete sentence. Even the second split also is a complete sentence uh, instead of abruptly starting this, uh, the chunk with you know, a period or something uh, silly. We can also use the recursive character text splitter when we are using llama index. For that, we need to use the node parser and we need to import the Langchain node parser. So basically, we have to use the recursive character text splitter from Langchain 
but we will have to then use the parser which is the langchain node parser and we can obtain the different nodes obviously because it's llama index it's more of nodes rather than documents so we can split the same text and we can obtain the different nodes so i've just printed the first node output and we can see that the text has been a split which is somewhere here so it says text is this one madam speaker even though recursive splitting works beautifully for text practically we'll be dealing with more of documents for example there could be specific documents which are like to deal with code for example python code or it could be you know html text or it could be markdown text so in order to chunk these we'll have to use specialist chunkers or specialist splitters which come along with langchain and they're all part of text splitter for example let's have a look at the python code text splitter so let's assume we are given this python code which is a small class which defines an employee and you can create several employees by providing specifics when we use the python code splitter we'll have to once again provide the chunk size and the overlap and to the python splitter we'll have to invoke the create documents function and then provide the python text and then what happens is that it creates uh, several document objects by splitting the input given python file to our specification similarly we can deal with markdown but i'm going to move on to how we can use the splitter in the llama index similar to langchain llama index provides node parser and within node parser we have markdown node parser so let's take the example of uh, reading a markdown file and then splitting it into different nodes so we once again have to use the flat reader that we used previously we'll have to load the markdown file by providing the path to the uh, markdown file so once we have the markdown document then we'll have to invoke the get notes from documents and provide the red markdown document as the input and obviously we get all the outputs as notes and these notes are different chunks of the input markdown file because i've just printed two of the notes we could see that each of the notes again has an id and we have managed to split the input markdown file into several chunks the next type of chunking is semantic chunking in semantic chunking we split the chunks based on their semantic similarity and to compute the similarity we need to embed the chunks by embedding we convert the text to numbers which we will we can do with our computation but basically what we are saying is that we take the several chunks we embed them and then we get them as numbers and these numbers fall in particular places in their semantic space for example this chunk could be falling here and the second chunk could be falling here and the third one could be somewhere lying here so we take some criteria by which we group them uh, for example the percentile it could be we just choose a threshold in the percentile and whichever is higher than that percentile we just group them and form them as one but the one that lies more than that threshold becomes a separate one and we treat that as a separate chunk so that's how we group the chunks together based on semantics and that's how the semantic chunking works so in terms of the implementation so there is a semantic chunker available within the langchain framework we import the semantic chunker and because we now need to embed our text or chunks we can we have to use an embedding model so we can either choose to use the open ai embedding model or we can use the olama embedding and when we say olama embedding we need to use one of the models that are available within the olama ecosystem so it could be a uh, llama 2 for example i'm going to use a, a simple embedding model that is much simple just for the sake of simplicity so this is how pretty much the semantic chunker works we pass the model that we are going to use for uh, embedding within the uh, olama embedding and then we initiate the semantic chunks and then we initiate the semantic chunker by passing the breakpoint threshold basically like I'm, like i explained before it can be percentile it can be anything else but we are passing a threshold and saying that whatever is less than this threshold in terms of percentile we need to uh, chunk them together so the chunker works by determining when to break apart sentences so that's based on pretty much the uh, break threshold that we are providing 
And this is done by looking for differences in embeddings between two sentences. Of course, we are embedding each of the sentences into different vectors. When the difference is past some threshold, then they are split. So there are a few ways to determine what the threshold is, which is controlled by the breakpoint threshold argument. So that pretty much summarizes what I just explained. So that pretty much covers all the uh, chunking types that are available in Langchain. So we saw recursive, we saw HTML, Markdown and code. We saw the example of Python, and then we looked into semantic chunker and there's something called AI21 semantics text splitter. So this needs some API access. So I'm not going to go into the details. There are other uh, chunking methods like the dynamic chunking and also agentic chunking. Agentic is particularly advanced and like it's still emerging. So I'm not going to go into the details, but we can look into how we can choose the right method for chunking. Firstly, it comes down to the underlying embedding model. This chunking step is followed by embedding in the pipeline. So we need to choose the chunking based on the underlying embedding model in use. For example, if our given model, our if our LLM model is trained on small chunks, then there's no point in chunking into larger chunks because the model is not used to large chunks and it's not going to give us a good response if you're going to do it that way. And the next one is user's query. So chunking can be dynamic based on the user's query. Now, if the user prompt is quite long, then we need to chunk it to retrieve the context for each of the chunks before feeding them to the LLM. And the next consideration is latency and performance. So if you want real-time user experience as in a chat application, then it's better to keep the pipeline lightweight with fewer chunks so that the response is quicker. Now, as a standard practice, people are choosing to use a chunk size of 1024 with chunk overlap, but in a fast emerging field like this is bound to change, we'll have to wait and see how these things go. So as a conclusion, we can conclude that chunking is essential process to ease our life with RAG. Chunking methods should be chosen wisely in order to improve the accuracy and performance of any RAG pipeline and factors such as data management, retrieval efficiency and compute power available at our disposal should also be considered while choosing the chunking method. And as always, it's better to make use of frameworks such as Langchain and Llama Index that have efficient implementations that will make chunking much easier. And not forget that ambitious methods such as agentic chunking are evolving and are being implemented in these frameworks. So let's wait and watch what's coming up. But before that, I'm signing off and I will see you in my next video about RAG. See you then, bye.